All right, let's talk about limiting our brushes, okay? Limiting our brushes to a very set thing. Let's say I have 10 or 15 good brushes. I'd rather have 10 or 15 that I can keep track of that I know will cover all situations than 28,000 of them that I've downloaded online and only used once. Here's why. Maybe you should learn how to paint for the simple fact or draw for the simple fact of drawing. If you're using a brush to do all your drawing for you, what's the point of learning how to draw, right? Okay, so if we limit our number of brushes and then make it so we have to draw more, it will be better for you in the end, I promise. So let's go to brushes and let's make a new document. This new document is going to be based upon uh, a new paintbrush. So I, I choose pixels and my pixels are going to be no greater for any paintbrush. This is my rule. This is my rule. I don't know what your rule is, but my rule is going to be 256 for any new paintbrush that I paint with. Now anything that I use as texture on the other hand is probably going to be much higher than this but I'll talk about that later when we get to texture. So 256 by 256 pixels, 72 res, hit OK. This is the little world I have control of. Anything that fits in here, I could do a lot with this too. Let's also go into brushes and reset brushes and hit OK. That little button is right here, right there. Okay, let's look at our brushes here and uh, see what we have available to us, just stock. Let's use uh, 23 for instance. 23 already has a raggedy outside edge. This is tapered because I have a Wacom drawing tablet. So number 23, what I want to do is kind of custom tailor this out. Maybe for the first thing I should do is take off shape dynamics. take off other dynamics and let's go to spacing and turn this up, up a little bit. So now I have a large space in between here. The larger the space, the more variance that occurs. Under shape dynamics, notice how it, it curls up into a little ball because this is based on pen pressure. So I'm going to turn that off. But if I turn angle jitter on, I get a much better variance because this now rotates the brush randomly as I paint. So I'm going to turn that on. So what I'm going to do is make a brush based upon this variance here. Not this, but this variance. Okay, using the bracket keys, I can make my brush bigger and smaller. And I have to use black. Okay. Another thing, keep hitting undo. The first thing you should know is always have this off, flows all the way up, opacity is all the way up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just randomly go in here and just paint a nice daub that represents maybe a pencil lead. And what I like about this brush, it has a nice uh, outside edge where it's kind of, you know, you might want to keep that in mind. Just See how I'm making it a little rougher around the outside edges by just tapping on my Wacom drawing tablet? So I want to keep that there. That builds texture as you paint, and that's important. Okay, now, things that I can do here is sharpen this so it becomes a little easier to look at. And by sharpening it, let's go to Navigator and zoom into the outside edge. So here, what I want to do is go to Filter, Sharpen, Sharpen. Okay. Now if you see what that did, it took a lot of the variance out. So you can make multiple variations of this brush just upon the fact that you can sharpen it a bunch of times. Or you can also blur it, go in burst, Ganesian Blur. So now I have a softer edge on the brush you're going to find that you're going to experiment around a lot trying to make this very first brush 
custom made to your specifications. I'm not going to be picky about it. I know that they all basically do the same thing. Um, but, you know, I would say a blurred version is kind of handy to have around. Okay, so let's go here to uh, edit, define brush preset. Okay, I'm going to call this my ragged brush. normal that in case I make a ragged brush smooth and a ragged brush sharpened so again you should limit your amount of brushes so unless you're going pro or whatever I wouldn't worry about having a normal uh, normal and the two others okay so here we go so now I have this brush and it's located down here in my brush presets 233 okay and now I can change its properties. Well, let's see, what properties should this one have? Well, let's see. First off, the spacing's a little dense. Okay. Another thing I like is under other dynamics, I have this as pen pressure. Okay, then I'll have to readjust the spacing. So what I'm looking for is something like this has a nice raggedy outside edge and it has a good bleed that goes through it. This is important for blending. You don't want to get too thick because it will have no texture and you don't want to get too thin because then it will have this weird coily cue effect going on that you'll have to blend out anyway. So you want just in the middle of that. Alright, so let's test this out. Using black I can kind of go in here and scratch around a little bit. Okay, use my navigator to kind of look at the outside edge. And sure enough, I do have a nice variance on the outside edge. It makes it very interesting to look at. Practice using it for a little bit. Practice flipping your weight controlling tablet pen around to the outside edge, and then drawing it back. Okay, you're just looking at stroke value. Now, in order to make this really nice, what I usually do is leave this at 50-50. And that's for any variance of the brush. Okay, so now I get a much wider variety of stroke values and tones of gray in there. So real light, I can go like this. Real dark, I can practically go all the way up to complete black without going too black without stacking it. That's important because you don't want to get too dark in your tones. All right, this is a really nice brush. I'm really happy with it. And I stay away from shape dynamics as far as this goes. Okay, notice shape dynamics is off. If I have that on, it will taper the point. I kind of leave that off for shape dynamics. I want it to have a raggedy tail and then I'll make smaller brushes compared uh, the brush smaller using the bracket keys. Okay, very happy with this brush. So what I'm going to do is now save it as a tool preset and call it my um, this is my overall sketch brush I call it. I do not want to include color and I'll hit OK. All right, so that what that did, that saved everything. It saved the opacity. It saved everything to that brush. All right, so in the next video, I want to make a couple more brushes and then show you how to uh, wean down the selection in here to, you know, what you actually need. Like, I never made a maple leaf in my life, okay? So I probably won't need that. All right, that's in the next video.